In today's video, we're going to take a look at some dollar books I picked up on a recent trip to a couple local shops. Check it out! Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel. My name's Chris, and this is North Garden Comics. I've got, as per usual, another stack of back issues to show you today. These are going to be all dollar books that I got from a couple different local shops recently. The first set of books comes from Pulp Comics, my favorite dollar bin diving spot in the, not technically in the Twin Cities metro, it's about an hour south of the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, but still my favorite dollar bin diving spot. And that's where the first stack of books comes from. You know, whenever I go into a store or a sale or a show, whatever it is, I go in very open-minded because you have no idea what you're going to find uh, in, you know, that's available. And my wish list is huge. So I kind of go in and just see what they have available that day. But sometimes when you come out of a store or a show or a sale, the, you find that there was a theme that would emerge from the books that you found that day. And that was the case on this trip to Pulp. This is definitely heavy on the Transformers variant theme. And so if you like Transformers books, you're in for a treat. If you don't, uh, well, there's more books coming after that, but it's going to be Transformers heavy to start with. But I will pause and tell you as well, because I forgot to mention this at the beginning, I'll put links to these stores um, down below in case you want to check them out. And I do that just kind of as a general practice. If I mention a show or a sale or a store or a seller, if they have an online presence and a way for me to link you to them, I'll definitely put that down in the description. So that being said, these mostly come from the IDW era of Transformers. There aren't many actual issues that I need, but just about every issue they've come out with has had at least one other variant. They typically did an A cover and a B cover, and you know sometimes they did ratio variants and things like that, but I have made it my um, goal, not goal, it's a loose goal, but I've put all those variants on my wish list. Transformers is one of those kind of properties that I'll just continue to collect whatever I can find, even if it's a third or a fourth variant just to have it all because it's my favorite property in all of comics. So I, I like to get as many of those as I can find, especially when I can find them for cheap. And most of these, I don't think there's any that were actual holes that I filled. They were all variants. So for example, if I had the A cover already, I found the B cover or vice versa. You get the idea. So just keep that in mind as we go through these here. First one is from Transformers Regeneration 1. This was a continuation of the Marvel series that ended with issue 80. And then IDW picked that up with issue 81 and took it all the way to issue 100. They brought back Simon Furman to write. They had uh, Wildman doing the pencils and I think he was penciling at the end of the Marvel run as well. And then you get just some great covers by a variety of artists. This one may be a, a Guido Guidi uh, cover. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm wrong, I'll put it down in a little text there, but I just like to get all the covers I can and so this was one that I didn't have. This is the A cover to issue 88. Then we go over to one of the earliest IDW Transformers comics. They started out by doing limited series, not ongoings. And one of those early series was called Devastation. And so I got the, the B cover for issue number one. And then I got same Devastation. This is the A cover to issue three. And still with Devastation, here is the B cover to issue four. Um, Hunter Onion. That's a, that's a tragic storyline that uh, goes through those early issues. Then we move forward to a different Transformers limited series, Escalation. This is issue three, the A cover. Now we're gonna move forward a bit more. Eventually IDW stopped the limited series. They did an ongoing series just called Transformers and that ran like 30, 31 issues, something like that. And then after that, they actually 
started two ongoing titles. One was called, they were both called Transformers, but one was More Than Meets the Eye. The other one was Robots in Disguise. And I was collecting both of those. And so I got a few variants from both of those titles. Uh, these first few are from, actually this first one is from More Than Meets the Eye. This is the A cover to issue number two. And they did several covers for these. These are all connecting covers. So it'll take me a while to get all of those if I ever get all of them, but happy to continue adding them to my collection as I find them. And then going over to Robots in Disguise, the parallel title, they were, you know, the more than meets the eye was following uh, Hot Rod, AKA Rodimus, as he led a band of Autobots out into space on kind of a, a, a a space faring quest uh, to find what were they called the the knights of something they were they were on this quest and they went off into space the robots in disguise title was um, focused on the post-war cybertronians left on the planet and more of a political kind of story there that you had but this is robots in disguise number three the a cover with wheeljack and then the B cover to number four with Blur. And then here is issue nine, the A cover. And you'll notice dollar price tag stickers. Those are all on the bags, nothing on the books themselves. And then jump forward, here's the A cover to issue number 17. Nice Livio Ramondelli cover of Shockwave there. This is actually still the same title, issue 45. At one point, they stopped calling it Robots in Disguise. It just got, they dropped the Robots in Disguise and it was just Transformers towards the end of the run. Then there were some other limited series that told either tie-in stories or gave more background stories, like more old, um, old war kind of stories for lack of a better term. But here was Transformers Primacy. This is issue number four. I think it was just a four part limited series. Again, Livio Ramondelli doing the covers and the interior art. And then from another connected limited series, this is the A cover to number two of Transformers Monstrosity with the Shark Decons. And then same limited series, A cover to issue number three. Very cool. And then just because I love Transformers so much, these were fun. They have done a number of different crossovers with the Transformers franchise, crossing over with different Hasbro properties. One of those is My Little Pony, and the mashup you never thought you'd see. But this is Transformers My Little Pony Friendship in Disguise, issue number two. I think I have issue one, but never got any of the others. And so since I found them for a buck, why not, right? The completionist in me said, get them. And then issue four. And then I told you theme of Transformers variants here. Transformers under IDW did a series of one shots that were called spotlight issues that spotlighted as the name suggests one character to give that more of their backstory or to flesh out more of the story that they were involved in currently. And there were probably 20 some odd spotlight issues. And this one is the A cover to RC's. Very cool cover. And then one more Transformers book, but this goes back to the Dreamwave era. It's a variant that I didn't have. This is from the War Within limited series, one of the covers to issue number five. So great progress on some Transformers variants. They're the kind of books that I'll pick them up when I find them because I don't often find them. You just don't see a ton of IDW Transformers in the wild, but every once in a while you do. And it makes me think that somebody sold a collection to the store and had a bunch of these variants and that gives me the opportunity then to build out my own collection, which I'm very happy for. Uh, I did get some other books on this trip to Pulp. The first one here, I'll show you Silver Surfer Rebirth. 
It's a recent limited series done by Ron Mars writing and Ron Lim doing the pencils. This was issue four. This is the one issue that had been missing from my limited series for many months now. Uh, finally was able to find a copy and now I've completed that limited series. And then two other issues from a different limited series. I got the first couple new and then decided I would just try to hunt the remainder down in dollar bins. And I'm, oh, maybe I have completed that now <laughs> as I'm looking at this one. Um, the Betsy Braddock Captain Britain. Here's issue number four. And then issue number five. Five. So I think I've got all these issues now from that limited series. It's um, Knights of X, which was another series written by Teeny Howard focusing on these characters. I'm missing the fifth and final issue of that one, but we're making progress slowly but surely there. And then some other recent things that I picked up that I'm just not getting them new. I'm picking them up as I can find them in dollar bins. This is Immoral X-Men number three of three. It's part of the Sins of Sinister event story that went across, I think, three different titles. They retitled three of the current X-Men series and told this story. And um, yeah, I'm just getting them in the dollar bins as I can find them. And then the last book from Pulp Comics is another run I'm trying to build out uh, or complete because I started it but then it got too crazy and so I figured I'd wait for the dust to settle and then I would collect it. This is Avengers number 66. This is the final issue in the Avengers volume, this Avengers volume. This whole volume was written by Jason Aaron and I like him as a writer. Loved what he did on Thor and Jane Foster Thor and some other things he's written and I was following him in the Avengers title but then like I said it got real busy and it went into other spin-off titles and there were so many issues and I wasn't sure what was necessary and what was just you know extra and read it if you want to but you don't have to so I hit the pause button wait for the dust to settle now his run is complete and now I can kind of see in hindsight what are those issues I want to get so I can fill that out and and complete his story so working on that and there um of Jason Aaron's run. And that kind of is a good segue into the next stack of books. We're gonna shift gears and I'll show you some books I got from another store called Mind's Eye Comics. They are, well, they're getting in the process to, to be ready to move locations to a much bigger location. And they've been doing some sales. This was, I think they were calling it like a back to school sale, but they were trying to move some inventory just to try to reduce the amount of stuff they had on hand for when they make this move to the new space. But they were doing dollar back issues. And I always love the dollar back issue sales because it can help me get very recent things um, for really cheap. And it helps me to fill in those holes. And that last Avengers book I showed you is a good segue because I was able to make some good progress as a result of this Mind's Eye sale. The first one is still from that same Avengers run by Jason Aaron. This is Avengers 62. Um, yep, I think I only need like five more issues to complete this main Avengers volume. And then I mentioned before there were spinoffs and tie-in series that were written by Jason Aaron and fleshed out that story. One was called, or the main one was called Avengers Assemble. Maybe that was a storyline. Maybe that wasn't even a title. There's an Avengers Assemble Alpha and there's an Avengers Assemble Omega issue. But truth be told, I don't know narratively how they tie into these others. I just know they're part of that Jason Aaron story. So here's the Alpha issue I got. And I think it ties into the story that was ping-ponging back and forth between Avengers and then this series which is called Avengers Forever and I think it goes back and forth and I think that Avengers Assemble Alpha and then the corresponding Omega issue tie into a story that was going on like I said back and forth between these two titles but got several issues from this Avengers Forever that went for like 
I don't know what, maybe like 15 issues or so. There's issue two. Here's issue five. Issue seven. And these I've already gotten rebagged and boarded in some nice OPP bags and boards from Comic Pro Line. I bought a bunch of those back, I want to say around the new year kind of time frame because they were having a sale and you could get free shipping on certain size order. And so I went big, made it, placed a big order, and I've been slowly, you know, using those to rebag and board things uh, in my collection and use them as new bags and boards for things that don't have one. There's issue 10. But I've been very pleased with the, the quality of these so far. And they present really nice. They almost look nicer than a polypropylene bag. And they're much easier on the wallet than Mylar when you don't need Mylar. Uh, so that's it for Avengers Forever. I did get this other one. It's another one of those spin-off tie-in type titles not written by Jason Aaron. And at this point, I'm not looking to collect it. I think it may have been a limited series but I liked this cover. This is All Out Avengers, number two, cover by Ryan Stegman of Jane Foster, Mighty Thor. I just thought that was great, so grab that for a buck. And then the last book I got from Mind's Eye, another title altogether that I'm trying to finish. Uh, it just recently concluded with its own issue 15, but this was the recent She-Hulk title. I have most of these, but I am missing just a couple issues at the lower end of this run. So happy when I can find those for a buck uh, on sale. So I got issue number two from that volume. And then that does it for Mind's Eye. I just have one other book to show you. This was a random um, find. My One of my daughters actually called me. She was out at garage sales. And she FaceTimed me because she's like, Dad, there's comic books here. And so she FaceTimed me. It was a short box of comics. They wanted $2 a piece for the books. And so if you know my videos and the prices I like to pay for back issues, if I'm going to spend $2, I'm going to be very picky because that's really spending up on a book for me. Um, he had a variety of newer things and some older things. Most of them I wasn't interested in. But one book did catch my eye. And I... Uh, haven't really seen it very often in the dollar bins or otherwise. It's not a key, nothing significantly valuable, but because he had it and it was in good shape, I figured what the heck, it's a, it's a fun thing to find at a garage sale for two bucks. This is The Amazing Spider-Man issue 416, so from the first volume of Amazing Spider-Man. And, you know, back in, the, back in the 90s, that first kind of main run there. But this was the kind of the epilogue story or one of the epilogue stories to the Avengers X-Men onslaught crossover event, the massive event from the 90s. And this is one of the stories I wanted to get because you can see it's called Heroes Farewell. And without giving you too many spoilers, you know, that ends very climactically. Uh, as a result of this event, it, it this is the timing when Marvel outsourced the editorial work on some of their main characters like Captain America, Iron Man, Fantastic Four, and the Avengers out to folks like Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld, and they did the Heroes Reborn era of things. So wanted to get this, and it's a, a cool cover as well um, from that. And the other reason I wanted this particular issue, let me show you one other book, is I've recently got myself this Omnibus. This is the X-Men Avengers Onslaught Omnibus, which collects many of the issues that crossed over from Avengers and Spider-Man and Fantastic Four and X-Men and Uncanny X-Men, etc., etc. It's a, a massive crossover event and uh, one of those major events from the 90s. And so I wanted to get this Omnibus edition even though I've been hunting for many of these issues in single issue format, I, I thought this would be a cool one to have on my shelf as well. But interestingly, this issue is not collected in this omnibus. At least I don't think it is. And so even though I have this now, 
I still wanted to get this to be able to flesh out that story a little bit further. So just one other fun thing to show you. And I guess let me show you the, uh, I'll show you the wraparound cover as well. This is a little bonus book you get to see. Let's see if I can do this gently. Nice wraparound cover there. But looking forward to giving this a full read again, because I've only read parts of this event from, because this is right around the time where I was getting out of collecting comics, at least for that chapter of my life. And then I didn't restart again until Transformers, my favorite property, um, relaunched under Dreamwave in the early 2000s. But yeah, so got that omnibus, fun to be able to show you that, and some fun dollar books as well. All right, that's gonna do it for me, and that's gonna wrap up this dollar bin haul from Pulp Comics and Games, as well as Mind's Eye Comics, then a fun little garage sale find, and even an omnibus edition. I will put links to all of these places where I got these things down below in case you want to check them out. And I do hope you saw something that you liked, but how about you? How are things going for you on your own adventures? Finding anything good? Had any good additions to your collection of late? Let us know down below. Now, if you're not quite ready for the YouTube fun to stop, I have hand selected a couple videos here for you to check out. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.